In the previous two recordings, we've taken a look first at a basic query report using Sage 300 Intelligence reporting. And then we've taken a look at a dashboard report and looked at the way that is constructed with subreports. So now what I want to do is I want to take a look at an income statement. And in order to modify this, I have to copy it. So I can do copy a couple of ways. I can click it up here, or I can right click and go down to copy. Then I click the folder where I want to place it, and I can click paste up here, or I can right click. And so now we have this copy, and I'm going to change the title to be something more palatable for me. Financial income statement, I'm going to get rid of this. And then we'll click apply. It says, do I want to assign the new name, delete the old template? Do I want to keep the original or assign the new name and leave the old template on the disk? This third one will make a copy with the new name. So I'm just going to say OK. And we'll delete the old one, rename everything with the new. And notice the template name has changed and the report name has changed. Now, if we double click this, you'll see that I have all the sub reports that you saw down here as part of this report. And if I look over here, you'll see that I have all the reports set up, and these are the sheets that they're going to output to. So I have an output sheet specified. If I wanted to put parameters on the second sheet, I'm going to have to modify the sheet to which something is sent. And I can do that by moving these around a lot of different ways, properties, so on and so forth. We'll look at doing that actually later on. But for now, when we look at this income statement, remember that this was a consolidated income statement. You'll notice the way the copy looks here and the way the original report looks here. But you'll also notice that there are some, these are simple reports or non-union reports. So I have several reports here that are actually part of the consolidated financial income statement. But when I copy the report, it doesn't copy the union report. So what I need to do down here in order to run this report, is if I try to run it right now, it'll give me an error message. And it'll tell me, you know, it's connected to something that has consolidation option set, but it doesn't have any any database name specified. So what I can do down here is go back to the original report, and you'll see in this one we've specified the name, and this one we have, and this one we haven't. We just open up and check the database. We can use this consolidated report as a report for a single entity or for multiple entities. So I'll just have to go down through all these sub-reports in the original copy and click on them. Now I'm not playing, planning to make any changes to these reports. If I were planning to make changes to them, I'd have to copy them or I'd need to copy them as well. But I'm just going to go through and set the databases or the companies for each one of these. And now that we have the company set, we can actually run our copy of the report. And notice we're we're not making a copy of the subreports because I don't need I don't, don't want to make changes to the subreports. I do want to create new financial income statement reports. And so now we'll run it. All that data will be extracted copy on copied onto worksheets in Excel. Again, I'm going to choose 2019. I know there's data there. And we'll say OK and let it build the Excel sheet. When the financial statement opens, it'll look like this. And I'm going to close this for just a second to show you that you get a first sheet of instructions to show you some basic ideas about how to in, how to edit or create new layouts. And then you get three sheets with pre-generated financial statements on them. So <clears throat> you'll notice there's nothing here. Let me change to 2019 where there's actually data. And you'll see we have a nice chart and a summary income statement. 
The same thing here. Current period is 10. 2020 versus 2019. Remember, we set 2019 as the year when we generated this. And I can change the period to a different period. And the numbers will change. And the same thing, actual versus budget. When I change to a year and change periods, the reporting will change. If I had other budget sets and I don't, I could change to different budget sets. So we've seen our three standard layouts. Let's create a new one using the layout wizard. We'll call this income statement comparison 12 months. And then we get the layout generator. So I'll pick the company. We'll pick the fiscal year that we selected. Currency we don't have to choose. We only have a single currency. And we'll pick the functional currency. And the rest of these we don't need. I'll go ahead and pick some options. We'll pick all the options to show the account detail, sub subtotals at the bottom, and exclude zero detail rows. Next thing we need to do is pick text columns, which is what we want to show as the first couple of columns of text. Pick the account and the row description. And then what we want to do is a 12-month comparison. So we'll just select in order the rows we want to see. 13 is the adjustment period and 14 is the closing period. And then one of the things to notice here is we can drag these around and reorder them if we want to. We can also add calculations. So if we want to do a year-to-date actual, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the formulas. And I'm actually going to add year-to-date 14 which is going to give me a year to date for the whole year. All right, now we need to do rows. And I'll just pick a row set. I copied, and we'll pick income statement. And so now what do we want to include on this row? If we look at the row sets, we can see that a row set, and this is just a copy of this, this one, a row set is just a way of talking about the rows in a report. So this row set has got revenue, which is account group 140, cost of sales, which is account group 150. And when I move down through here, I can see down below the preview, these are the accounts that are in that group. I could also say miscellaneous and say accounts, and I could give it account numbers. And notice it will build the account number list as I go. So I can either use groups or I can use individual accounts, uh, depending on what I'm trying to accomplish. And so we will go back to the layout design. And we're going to use the standard income statement. And we're just going to add these in order. Revenue. And now I want a calculation row. Total revenue. Notice I've got go pro gross profit here. Cost of sales. Let me just add them this way. Then go to the calculation rows and we'll add all of these. And then the way to do this is I want gross profit up here. I want to go ahead and put my other revenue and other expenses here. Total net profit before tax. I want to drag up here, net profit and loss, and then I put my interest expenses here. Okay, now we got them in the right order. So I've got total profit and loss before interest and tax, interest, net profit before tax, tax, and net profit and loss. And everything else looks good to me. And then I'll say generate. And what's going to happen is it's actually going to create another sheet. And it's going to put this layout into the sheet. I told it to show the detail accounts. So I'm going to get detail accounts um, in this structure. And there we go. I can do a quick edit. 
and it'll let me make changes to this. Exit and let me save them. And then when I get ready to save this back to the report writer, notice I now have tabs, instructions. These are the three standard reports. And now I've got a 12-month comparison. If I go back to the report writer and I click on that report, I have the option to save the until the Excel template. And it says, which one do you want to save? I'll save that one, which is, notice, the one I have open in Excel over here. And then I'm going to say, OK. And there's my template name. It says it's already there. Do I want to replace it? Yes, I want to replace it. OK, the template's now saved. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to close Excel. Got everything cleared out here. We'll run this again. Let's go ahead and pull all the data. And when I generate this, now I have the same standard spreadsheets, but I also have this 12 month comparison. And I can do a lot of things with this. Let's do this. I want to do a quick edit of this. And let's go ahead and do uh, uncheck the show subtotals. And yes, I want to save it. And let's go 2020. Now you can see since I loaded some 2020 data, I do have 2020 data. Let's suppose that we look at this and we say, you know, this is, is kind of ugly. What I'd like to do is I'd really like to do some Excel formatting. So um, I want to indent this. I want to indent cost of sales. And let's indent these. We'll just make all this a little bit prettier. And then maybe I want to highlight total revenue. And I want to make it yellow. And then I want to highlight net profit and loss. And I want to make it, uh, let's go with blue. And you might be wondering, well, can I save that kind of formatting? Let's go back over here, click again, save Excel template. This is the one I want to save. Uh, it's named, I'm going to leave the same, and yes, I do want to replace it. Now it's closed, and I'll just run it again. And this time I'm only going to run it for 2018. And when the report opens up, I still have the formatting that I had done previously. I don't have any data in 2018, but the formatting is there. So intelligence reporting is a tool for extracting data from multiple tables, including that in a spreadsheet, and then being able to format that data in any way you want to. In addition to the standard extraction functionality. There is also this financial layout functionality that lets me use a layout generator or I can do this manually in order to create new financial statements. Uh, one of the things that you might see here, I showed you the generator, but now that I have it, I can also do things in the layout design panel that allows me to set up even more details, formula trees, so on and so forth. So what I've shown you with the layout generator, the new layout, is the, the easy way to generate standard financials. This over here in the financials uh, task panel 
is a more detailed control over the financial statements that you generate. And then the next couple of videos will show you how to pull data that is not part of the standard data set, including data from other applications. We'll show you how to use the reporting functions in Sage Intelligence Reporting to generate reports that do most anything you might want to do. Thank you for watching. If you should need additional assistance with Sage 300, or SAGE 300 Intelligence Reporting, please contact me either at the telephone numbers listed above or by email at the email address listed above. Thank you again for watching.